Hare Krishna, we continue reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is. We are on chapter 8, attaining the Supreme Text 3. Shri Bhagavan Ubacha Aksharam Brahma Param Paramam Swabhava Adhyatamam Uchyate Bhuta Bhavod Bhava Karo Visarga Karma Samchnitaha Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swamishla Prabhupada. The Supreme Personality of God had said, The indestructible and transcendental living entity is called Brahman and his eternal nature is called Adhyatma, the Self. Action pertaining to the development of the material bodies of the living entities is called Karma or fruitive activities. So Krishna is addressed throughout the Bhagavad Gita by Shla Vyasadeva as Bhagavan. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. Bhagavan is God. Huh? God is speaking. So God is a person and that's how he can speak. If he was not a person, how could he speak? So he is speaking. God is speaking. Krishna is God and he's speaking. What is he saying? The indestructible, transcendental living entity is called Brahman. So we, the living entities, we are indestructible. When we are saying the living entity, we don't refer to the body. The living entity is the soul. So the soul is indestructible and is spiritual, transcendental. It's not material. And so the living entity is called Brahman. And the nature of the living entity is called Adhyatma, the self. Now, how do we get these different material bodies? That action is called karma or fruitive activities. Brahman is indestructible and eternally existing and its constitution is not changed at any time. But beyond Brahman, there is Parabrahman. Brahman refers to the living entity and Brahman, uh, I'm sorry, Parabrahman refers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So the point we need to understand is we are the Brahman, the souls. The soul is the Brahman. But it does not mean that we are the Parabrahman. No, God is Parabrahman. We are Brahman, yes. The souls are all Brahman. But who is the Parabrahman? That is God. That is God. The constitutional position of the living entity is different from the position he takes in the material world. In material consciousness, his nature is to try to be the Lord of matter. But in spiritual consciousness, Krishna consciousness, his position is to serve the Supreme. So our real consciousness the consciousness of the soul. What is the consciousness of the soul? The soul has a consciousness. The, it's the soul that is conscious, not the body. The consciousness is not with the body. The body becomes dead. It lies. It's useless, thrown away. The consciousness is with the soul. So what is the consciousness of the soul? The consciousness of the soul is to serve Krishna, to serve God. But this, the, uh, because right now we are in the material body. So what we are thinking is, I'm the body. We have forgotten we are the soul. And because we are thinking we are the body, what we are thinking is, I'm God. Everything is for my enjoyment. Everyone should be serving me. This is material consciousness. When the living entity is in material consciousness, he has to take on various bodies in the material world. That is called karma or varied creation by the force of material consciousness. So we are the pure soul, but we are taking different bodies, different bodies. Why? Based on how we act, based on our consciousness, based on our desire. We are keeping on taking so many different bodies and we keep thinking and in each body we think, oh, this is who I am. We are, we are thinking we are the body. We have forgotten that we are spirit souls. 
in the Vedic literature, the living entity is called Jivatma and Brahman. But he's never called Parabrahman. The living entity, Jivatma, takes different positions. Sometimes he merges into the dark material nature and identifies himself with matter. And sometimes he identifies himself with the superior spiritual nature. Therefore, he's called the Supreme Lord's marginal energy. So we, the, the Jivatma, the living entity, we are called Jivatma, we are called Brahman, we are never called Paramatma, we are never called Parabrahman. Paramatma, Parabrahman, that is God. We, the souls, all of us, each of us, we are living entity, we are Jivatma. So we are the Tatashta Shakti of God, God's marginal energy. What is meaning of marginal energy? Is sometimes we are under this material energy. When we are under the influence of material energy, that time we think we are the body. And sometimes we are under the control of the spiritual energy. Then when we are in the control of spiritual energy, then we realize, oh, I am spirit soul. I am part and parcel of God. So because we keep changing our position, that's why we are called marginal. Marginal. Just as uh, the ocean shore, tata, the ocean shore, sometimes it's in water, sometimes it's not. So we, the living entity, the jivatma, because our size is so small, we need to be in the shelter. Sometimes we are taking shelter of material energy. Sometimes we are taking shelter of spiritual energy. According to his identification with material or spiritual nature, he receives a material or spiritual body. So when we are in the material world, we get a material body. Ah, what happens when we are in the spiritual world? We have a spiritual body. There we are under the control of spiritual energy. Spiritual nature. There we understand, oh, I am spirit soul. In the spiritual world, we understand I'm soul, I'm not body. It's only in this material world that we take on different, different material bodies. Once we have a spiritual body, we never change that body. That is our eternal body. That is our eternal identity. You know, eternal identity. Here in the material world, we are keeping on changing one body to another. And each time we think, oh, I'm, and now if I'm body of animal, I will think, oh, I'm animal. If I'm body of a fish, I'll think I'm fish. I'm body of a human being, I will think I'm human being. But in the spiritual nature, only one body, that is it. That's our real body. The spiritual body is our real body. So in material nature, he is manifested sometimes as a man, demigod, animal, bead, beast, bird, etc. according to karma. So according to how we act, we change these different material bodies. But what about our spiritual body, our spiritual soul? That is our true body. That we never change. That is who we truly are to attain material heavenly planets and enjoy their facilities. He sometimes performs sacrifices, yagya, but when his merit is exhausted, he returns to earth again in the form of a man. This process is called karma. So we may go up to the heavenly planets, the swargalok, but the swargalok is also in the material world. You know, we say, I'm going to do some dan punya, some charity. I'll do some fasting. I will do some, go to the place of pilgrimage to take a bath. Why? So I'll get some punya karma, pious activity. Why? So that I can go to the heavenly planet. Why? So I can enjoy more. But heavenly planet is also in the material world. In heavenly planet also, we have material body. Then when our time is finished to be in the, material, in the heavenly planet, then we have to come back to this earth again as a human being, again to create new karma. 
So going to heavenly planet is like, for example, we have X amount of money huh? and we only this much money is there. And we say we are going on a vacation with that money. Cannot get more money there. Once all that money is finished, vacation is finished, then we come back. Again, we have to work hard to get more money. So this is what happens. We go to the spiritual world. Uh, I'm sorry, to the heavenly planets. Not spiritual world. Heavenly planets. Heavenly planets are also in the material world. Swargalok is in the material world. Then we have the, the fixed amount of good karma which allows us to remain in the Swargalok for a certain time. After that good karma is finished, again, we have to come to this earth planet in the form of a human being to create new karma. So this has been going on since time immemorial. We have been going up, down, everywhere, sometimes in the heavenly planet, sometimes as animals, sometimes as human beings. The Chandogya Upanishad describes the Vedic sacrificial process. On the sacrificial altar, five kinds of offerings are made into five kinds of fire. The five kinds of fire are conceived of as the heavenly planets, clouds, the earth, man and woman. And the five kinds of sacrificial offerings are faith, the enjoyer on the moon, rain, grains and semen. So this is how the yagyas would be done. You know, the fire sacrifice. The fire sacrifice. The big, big yagya. Havan. What we call Havan. So in the process of sacrifice, the living entity makes specific sacrifices to attain specific heavenly planets and consequently reaches them. So people do this big, big yagya to go to certain heavenly planet. They'll say, I'm going to do one yagya and then I can go to the moon planet. I'll do another yagya. I can go to the sun planet. Uh -huh. And he goes there. When the merit of sacrifice is exhausted, the living entity descends to earth in the form of rain, then takes on the form of grains and the grains are eaten by man and transformed into semen, which impregnates a woman and thus the living entity once again attains the human form to perform sacrifice and so repeat the same cycle. So once we reach the heavenly planet, how do we come back to this earth again? The process is described. So, okay, we some, okay, so I did the sacrifice. I went up to sun planet, for example. Now my time to remain on the sun planet is over. Then what happens? I have to come back now to the earth. So in what form do I come? I will come in the form of rain. And then from the rain, the seed grows, right? The, the grains are there in the earth. When the rain falls, the grains are become abundant. Then this grain is eaten by man. And then it becomes into semen. And this semen is put into the body of a woman. And this is how the living entity again gets the human form, again to create new karma. In this way, the living entity perpetually comes and goes on the material path. So this has been happening to us. Since time immemorial, we have been doing that. Sometimes we go to heavenly planets, we again come down to the earth planet like this, in the form of rain, then grain, then semen, then again become uh, put into a woman's stomach and then get a human form. Or sometimes we become animals. If we have done bad karma, we become animals or we go to hellish planets. The Krishna conscious person, however, avoids such sacrifices. He directly takes to Krishna consciousness and thereby prepares himself to return to Godhead. So what about a Krishna conscious person? He does not want to go to any heavenly planet. Why? Because he understands that his, even if I go to the heavenly planet, my time on that heavenly planet is temporary, is limited. I will be kicked out of there again. And again, I have to come here to this earth or again, I have to take birth as an animal. So 
What does a Krishna conscious person do? He says he wants to put an end completely to material life. He wants to be situated on the platform of the soul. He wants to have a spiritual body. So he wants to go to the spiritual world, the kingdom of God. And how does he do that? By taking up Krishna consciousness. By taking up Krishna consciousness, he can go back to the spiritual world. Impersonalist commentators on the Bhagavad Gita unreasonably assume that Brahman takes the form of Jiva in the material world. And to substantiate this, they refer to chapter 15, verse 7 of the Gita. But in this verse, the Lord also speaks of the living entity as an eternal fragment of myself. The fragment of God, the living entity, may fall down into the material world, but the Supreme Lord Achyuta never falls down. Therefore, this assumption that the Supreme Brahman assumes the form of a jiva is not acceptable. It is important to remember that in Vedic literature, Brahman, the living entity, is distinguished from Parabrahman, the Supreme Lord. So we have to understand that the living entity, sometimes we, we are the living entity, the soul, the Brahman, sometimes we come to the material world and we get this material body. But God, Parabrahman, he never gets a material body. God's body is always spiritual. Even if he comes to the material world, his body is spiritual. And this is the fact we need to understand. Krishna says, if we can understand this fact, then we get liberation. We simply have to try to understand that even when God comes to the material world, his body is not material, but it is spiritual. And by understanding this, we can go back home, back to the spiritual world. We can get liberation. Is that okay? So we'll stop here for today. Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Shla Prabhupada ki jai, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki jai, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much for listening.